Hey everybody, welcome to this very special edition of 5 Minutes or Less of EMS. Little disclaimer up front, as I always do, this is going to be slightly longer than 5 minutes. Have a new disclaimer, uh, you might not have a good sound quality. I've invited the County Medical Director, Dr. Garzon, to come up and join me uh, and give us a COVID-19 update. But I thought I would start first with uh, a brief update for the fire agencies. Uh, there is a change in our dispatch questioning. As you know, uh, there will be an MDT message uh, that gives you precautions if there's someone at the address that may be being tested for COVID-19, undergoing testing, told to self-quarantine. There's a small adjustment to the questions, which is going to be able to refine things a little bit, make them a little bit more narrow and focused. So here are the changes. The changes are dispatch they will ask in the last 21 days, has anyone there tested positive for the coronavirus, COVID-19, or waiting results of a test? If the answer to that question is yes, they will then message in the MDT uh, like they always have. The reason for this change is because the questions weren't quite getting at what we were hoping they would get at, and so this narrows it down, focuses it a little bit better, and gives you more information. But as you're going to see in my discussion with Dr. Garzon in just a second, this is very important. We need to approach every patient as if they have COVID-19. We need to be vid vigilant. COVID-19 is out there. If we have higher hospitalization rates than we've ever had. Dr. Garzon will take us into some of that. But, but we are at higher risk than we've ever been before. So this is sending in the scout with another person close behind. That scout needs to maintain six feet of distance, be masked, if possible, mask the patient soon, early, as soon as you can, and leave that mask in place. It will add a layer of protection for you and all the responders after that. And then if this person is suspected to be a PUI patient, carefully back out, don your PPE, only bring in contact those providers that need to be in direct contact as much to provide excellence in patient care. Which Okay, so I want to bring in Dr. Garzon. He's the County Medical Director for Sacramento County EMS Agency, and uh, we're going to kind of do a COVID-19 update. So thanks for joining me, Hernando. Why don't you kind of take us through the latest things that are out there and maybe some advice for our providers? Absolutely. So, I, I, you know, I think the COVID-19 update is that we are seeing more cases, more hospitalizations, more patients in the ICU now, not just in the state, but also in Sacramento, since this thing began, even when we were at the worst of the initial days uh, when we were stay at home. And we have COVID everywhere, right? It's all in the community. So I think we as individuals and as, as EMS workers are at risk, not just with our patients who are potentially symptomatic and exposed, but shopping in the supermarket, even at home with family members who are out working in other jobs. Um, so out in public. So I think the concern about exposure is everywhere. And I think we have to make the infection control the new normal of our lives. The masks, the six feet distance is really important. And I think we have to do that across the board. We don't have a vaccine for this, right? So to protect our patients, to, to protect our coworkers, to protect our families as much as you can do this and at, at appropriately physically distance family gatherings in an outdoor backyard, from what I hear you saying, uh, on our time off, right, masking, six foot distance, avoid large gatherings, washing our hands, right, just maintaining good general right. yeah. practices. And when we're at work, right, that's when we go back into the mode of what we've been doing in the past, which is sending in a scout, if you want to call it a scout, mm -hmm. right, send in a person that has six foot distance can do some questioning of the patient mm -hmm. uh, but really the picking out the COVID positive patients is extremely difficult so in my mind it's treat everybody as if they're COVID positive from the initial get-go right. it makes sense to try to mask a patient even if they don't have typical COVID symptoms correct I agree right and so mask all of our patients if that's possible limit aerosolized procedures Mm -hmm. Right, unless we absolutely have to, um, CPAP when we have to, communicating to the hospitals that we're coming in with somebody on CPAP, 
communicating with the hospitals that we're in our gowns and we're in PUI, right, and it is a PUI patient. And I even mentioned in the, in the modified orders that we have, if the patient has a meter dose inhaler, you can use the patient's meter dose inhaler instead of a nebulized treatment and see if that's effective because a, nebu uh, a meter dose inhaler is not an aerosol generating procedure. There's just one small caveat that you can do that. Or if you're carrying a meter dose inhaler, obviously you can use that as well before you choose to go to, to a, a nebulizer, if, if that's an option. Okay. Yep. Let, me, let me ask you about cardiac arrest. Because here we have a patient that can't answer any questions. We're going to do a bunch of aerosolized, well, at least one major one, which is potentially intubation or advanced airway management. Should we be all in PP at that point, just make the assumption this is a COVID positive patient and we should just all gown, mask, goggles and treat all of them that way and try to do a micron filter on the tube if we have one? Yes, I mean, again, it's seconds matter in cardiac arrest and if you delay the resuscitation for even half a minute, that can affect survival. Uh, but as much as you can initiate CPR, and get team members in in PPE, full PPE, and get them you know cycle out and replace. So, get your resuscitation team in PPE as soon as you can, being mindful that even a half a minute delay can affect survival. So, you mentioned all the good things about uh, a caution, you know, uh, hand hygiene frequently and often, the masking, the physical distancing. The other guideline is uh, social bubbles. Right? Don't hang out with five different friends every night of the week because now you've just exposed yourself or exposed whatever, 35 people uh, to your circle. And so uh, when you're expanding beyond your immediate household, if you want to socialize with a, with a small group of friends, again, physically distanced, masked in, in outdoor spaces, but choose those same five close friends to do regular. So try and keep those social bubbles small, again, as a way to minimize the risk of transmission. That's the other thing I think is helpful. That the mor mortality is higher for older than 65, especially skilled nursing facility patients. But still, people, young people w without medical problems in their 20s, 30s, 40s still have a higher mortality than, than with influenza. So it's still more dangerous for all people across the board, even though it is most dangerous for those older than 65. Okay, everybody, so that's a wrap for this session. Thanks for joining Hernando and I in this brief discussion about COVID-19. Lots of good information in here. Again, I appreciate Dr. Garzon and his time for joining me. Uh, this has been Dr. Mackey, and this has been another edition of 5 Minutes or Less of EMS.